Hello, this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. In this video, that will be somewhat painstaking, it's a rather difficult subject, we'll say a few words about Slavoj Zizek and so on and so forth. <laughs> uh, this is the text called his one of his, uh, let's say, older essays called Robespierre or the Divine Violence of Terror. Uh, it is rather long, uh, it is rather obscure as anything Zizek would write or say, uh, but uh, uh, we will try to extrapolate what it is about uh, in light of a subject. And that subject is uh, the terror, the revolutionary terror, and the advocacy of revolutionary terror on behalf of Slavoj Zizek. Uh, <laughs> so I'm uh, impersonating Zizek because he seems so, uh, uh, in his speech and his appearance, so benign and so buffoon-like, uh, that you, uh, if you don't know better, uh, kind of like uh, don't uh, don't see his darker side coming coming at you. In this essay, uh, in analyzing this essay, we'll try to demonstrate th this dark side. That is, this essay is a praise of revolutionary terror, and uh, moreover, an attempt to provide. Uh, theoretical grounds for revolutionary terror in our day and age. Revolutionary terror for postmodern leftists. Uh, Zizek here comes out, in, in this essay, Zizek comes out as a standard uh, co old communist, uh, old left, old leftist, but of uh, kind that can be peculiar to his uh, Western followers, because Zizek is, as some of you probably know, a Slovene, that is, he's a man who grew up in Yugoslavia, in the westernmost republic of Yugoslavia, most liberal republic, the first republic that confronted uh, Milosevic in his attempt to, to destroy Yugoslavia from the inside. Uh, and uh, Zizek was active at that time in democratic opposition, so-called demos. Uh, what is important is that he was educated in, um, let's say, environment uh, that was in fact still a communist environment, although Yugoslavia was famous for its, uh, let's say, softness, that's how people sometimes describe it, it's liberal communist uh, cons uh, system, let's say, not only system of thinking, but syst of politics, system of economy also. It was kind of like an attempt at a hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, between uh, free market and socialism, market socialism, which failed miserably as everything that was constituted in Yugoslavia. Uh, but uh, this means that uh, Yugoslav communists of Zizek's gener generations uh, were uh, people that uh, intellectually came of age in the 80s, early 80s, uh, were very hard to discern from their Western counterparts in the sense of music they listened to, their uh, uh, way of conduct they their their way of thinking, uh, uh, their uh, mannerisms, but nevertheless, they were something else. And Zizek here uh, proves that amply. They were uh, the generation uh, that was poised to be, let's say, uh, the uh, successors to their uh, to 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 old hardline communists uh, of Yugoslavia, uh, not in the formal sense, but it was a generation of leftists that were not leftist in the Western sense, but that 
they were in fact old left communists and by that I mean people who know that revolution without the revolutionary terror is something akin uh, to a playboy uh, bunny without tits and Zizek will prove this amply in this essay so essay is uh, devoted uh, about uh, devoted to Robes uh, to to a uh, figure of Robespierre and uh, Robespierre as a model revolutionary and it's very hard not to agree with Zizek on this and it uh, in in usual Zizek's manner uh, it goes uh, in in, in all imaginable intellectual nooks and crannies to run around the subject without being precisely clear but it is uh, quite possible to uh, catch him in moments of clarity when he discloses uh, what he really thinks so uh, this is an attempt we'll see how Zizek fares in his attempt to uh, reconstruct a revolutionary terror for our day and age and reappropriate it <clears throat> so Zizek starts by uh, counting uh, the the situation of the left in the postmodern era that is in the era after the fall of Berlin Wall in post Cold War era and. Uh, uh, the notion uh, that uh, French Revolution, which happened uh, uh, some 200 years uh, on uh, before, that is, the Berlin War fell at an, uh, not uh, at exact anniversary, but in uh, at the two, exact 200 years after the French Revolution, somehow in the minds of uh, let's say anti-leftist thinking uh, intellectuals it, it, it kind of proved that whole this uh, revolution of modernities uh, modernities revolutions were in fact a flops uh, this kind of, of people Zizek describes in this manner in short what the sensitive liberals want is a decaffeinated revolution decaf revolution a revolution which doesn't smell of revolution. What he likes to, what he wants to say here, is that uh, those people he calls sensitive liberals. Please remember this: sensitive liberals uh, want, in some way, want these uh, positive contents of the idea of revolution. Positive contents, uh, content in terminological and conceptual sense that is. Uh, brotherhood, uh, liberty and equality because we are never sure what they really mean by this but they don't want terror and Zizek is very uh, clear about uh, the fact that uh, revolution without terror is a decaf revolution coffee without caffeine and he calls them sensitive liberals this is uh, if I may interject a personal statement, I am not sensitive liberal, and to a some extent I would share, maybe could could talk with people, uh, could agree to some extent with people thinking in this way. Why he calls them sensitive liberals? Because this is the way to politicize something that he sees as a common sense. Uh, he doesn't approve it as a common sense because he doesn't approve of the existence of common sense. And he does this uh, by making, uh, finding a label uh, that will uh, insinuate that this kind of thinking of rejecting the revolutionary terror is in fact a political position that is conditioned in fact from the outside from the from the economical political and class relations in society 
and it's supposedly position of sensitive liberals. And by the way, Marxists from Marx and Engels onward uh, have nothing but scorn for liberals, uh, insignificant liberal. That was one of those, uh, um, let's say, a radical insults that old left Marxist would give you. Uh, they, they, they were considered to be scum of the earth because they are so undecisive. But as it is always with Marxism, uh, in this uh, vague term or network thereof, a network of vague terms, you can uh, uh, you can uh, kind of uh, insert a lot of disparate things. So everybody can be a sensitive liberal if need be. On the other hand says Zizek, radicals are, on the contrary, possessed by what Alain Badiou called the passion of the real. If you say A, equality, human rights and freedoms, you should not shrink from its consequences and gather the courage to say B, the terror needed to really defend and assert the A. So, in Zizek's views, there is opposite opinion where uh, heroically and hon honestly you appropriate uh, the fact that there is no obverse without reverse, that uh, terror is a necessary element of revolution. Well, Zizek wants to remain uh, faithful to what he calls the legacy of French Revolution, that is to say, to revolutionary thought and action in general. And to remain, uh, to, to accomplish this, he has to find a way to make this effect of necessity of revolutionary, ter revolutionary terror uh, acceptable in our day and age. He says, can one imagine something more foreign to a universe of the freedom of opinions, of market competition, of nomadic pluralist interaction, etc., 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 et the Robespierre's politics of truth, with a capital T, of course, <laughs> whose proclaimed goal is to return to the destiny of liberty in the hands of the truth. Such a truth can only be enforced in a terrorist way. Quote, or oh, this is a quote from Robespierre. If the mainspring of popular government in peace is virtue amid revolution, it is at the same time virtue and terror. Virtue without which terror is fatal. Terror without which virtue is impotent. Terror is nothing but prompt, severe and flexible justice. It is therefore an emanation of virtue. It is less a special principle then a consequence of the general principle of democracy applied to a country's most pressing needs. Now note, now how you demask uh, people like Zizek? Because uh, he's manipulating the reader. Uh, he looks so benign and chaotic and he does tend to jump from subject to subject from idea to idea, because he is a frantic personality. But there is a method to this, and uh, you can spot it when you read him carefully. Well, not even, maybe even not so carefully. Now listen to this. Can one imagine something more foreign to a universe of the freedom of opinions, of market competition? Look what he... So, this statement of uh, that truth can only be enforced in a terrorist way, is alien to us, not because we have an ounce of brains in our head, not because we have honest hearts, God forbid, not because we have an historical experience of people like Robespierre uh, creating havoc, destroying whole peoples and putting them uh, hundred years behind others, as it happened with communism, to a large extent. No, it's foreign to us, says Slavoj, because we live in, in this universe of freedom of opinions, market competition, nomadic pluralist 
interaction, etc., etc., as he would say. Look what he does. He makes it all ideological. He implies here, without explaining the implication, that these things I just uh, noted as common sense, as ounce of brains and such, are pure ideological liberal constructs, whereas they are not. And this is very insidious. He has some other methods, but this is this is the most obvious and most effective because he doesn't use quotes. Sometimes he'll quote Lacan or some other obscurantist uh, like him uh, to jump from the subject and to entangle the reader into undecipherable passage that ends with a question that is never answered. But here, this is this is purely rhetorical, rhetorical mean. Although, of course. Uh, Zizek believes it. So, terror is nothing, said Robespierre, but prompts a fear inflexible justice. The terror is pure justice in this, uh, in this mindset. And this is what Zizek wants to, in a way, appropriate. But how? What then should those who remain faithful to the legacy of the radical left do with all these? Two things at least. First, the terrorist, terrorist past has to be accepted as ours, even or precisely because it is critically rejected. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the, the, this is why, why we can call Zizek a true left and all old left, because he's aware, and he doesn't shy away from saying this, of this uh, real political political uh, aspect of communism, where communism has to be imposed by violent means. A revolution has to be imposed by violent means. It cannot be imposed by political correctness and such things. And he's very open about it now, uh, about it here. What this means, he, uh, he continues, is that the ruthless self-critique should go hand in hand with a fearless admission of what, to paraphrase Marx's judgment on Hegel's dialectics, one is tempted to call the rational kernel of the Jacobin ter terror. Materialist dialectics, presumably from Marx, he's quoting Marx, assumes without particular joy that, till now, no political subject was able to arrive at the eternity of the truth, it was deploying without moments of terror. This is what I just said about the old left. Since, as St. Just, Just asked, what do those who want neither virtue nor terror want? His answer is well known. They want corruption. Another day, a name for the subject's defeat. Now, this is this insidiousness. Of, of this uh, dialectical materialism. Uh, just, a, just a moment. A rational kernel, uh, because Marx is uh, using Hegel's dialectics in inverted sense. Uh, Hegel's dialectics is idealist dialectics, uh, whereas Marx's dialectics is the dialectics of matter, first in nature, something that Engels uh, developed in a kind of oof, Hegelian philosophy, uh, dialectics of nature. In Marx, this dialectics of economics, that is advanced uh, stage of material, uh, dialectics of matter, where uh, this dialectics becomes conscious, where matter becomes conscious, evolutionary dialectics. And the uh, kernel of truth that Marx considers to exist in Hegel Uh, was this either uh, this core of 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 of, of uh, reconciliation of opposites? Although Marx doesn't believe in reconciliation, but uh, in 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 uh, uh, not in personung as Hegel would call it, but in clash that ends up in in absorption of opposites in a, in a stage uh, in absolute stage of history in the. Uh, revocation of alienation of man and the fruits of his labor and so forth. We go, won't go into explaining dialectical materialism here, but this is important. 
So he's trying to find, Zizek is paraphrasing Marx, trying to find the essence of Jacobin terror. What is positive, what can be... Uh, uh, what can be what can be saved, rescued, and built upon today? And those are these words, like this from Saint Just, this French uh, revolutionary. Uh, th those maxims. This is what he wants to save. That which produced the general good is always terrible. Uh, you don't say. These words, says Zizek, should not be interpreted as a warning against the temptation to impose violently the general good onto society, but on the contrary, as a bitter truth to be fully endorsed. Well, Zizek, Slavoj, Kekets Draghi, let me explain you. Uh, bitter truths are rarely uh, fully endorsed. You don't find this bitter, you find this beautiful and you are enjoying it so this is something Zizek can sell in the West but uh, <laughs> it's 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 blatantly obvious uh, where his mentality rests now uh, look at this uh, this 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 uh, trick these words should not be interpreted as a warning but now you you expect he'll said something on the contrary but no he doesn't say, and he says, on the contrary, he says the same thing. They should be endorsed <laughs> and accepted with an ad added, uh, ad uh, this added quality of that they are bitter. But he, in fact, endorses them. He, he gives you uh, an impression that he will reject this, and he endorses it, uh, endorses it, uh, endorses it in the way that rhetorically uh, makes them uh, look even better these words that so that without terror n nothing can come about which is not true Robespierre very very similar thing Robespierre was a pacifist not out of hypocrisy or humanitarian sensitivity but because he was well aware that the war among nations as a rule serves as the means to obfuscate revolutionary struggle within each nation. See, Robespierre was not pacifist because of hypocrisy. So pacifism is hypocrisy. Humanitarian sensitivity. What is humanitarian sensitivity? People like Zizek see compassion as weakness. This is because he is a commissar. He is a late Yugoslavia communist commissar that never actualized, never realized himself. There is a lot of that lot here on uh, dark Balkan. You have a lot of people like this that can sound very tolerant, very modern, very non-totalitarian, take it as you like it, non-violent, but hide the commissar in their hearts. There's a lot of people like this, and and, and we here kind of uh, recognize them uh, sooner than people in the West, which is completely natural. Uh, although Zizek is a very intelligent man, he's a charlatan, in my opinion, not because he's weak-minded or he's born charlatan, but because he chooses to be charlatan, and in order to promote a lost cause, a cause that is historically obsolete, that was itself conceived to be absolute historical uh, given. Uh, there is that is not a metaphysics in proper sense, uh, not anything having to do anything with eternity, but historical prediction. Historical prediction that was meant to come to pass. Uh, by conscious historical struggle to combine in a way necessity and freedom it failed and it cannot start again once it's failed because it's prediction it rested on prediction and this prediction in all its segments of an advent of a new socialist man is that and this is what makes Zizek charlatan because he's a, that's his methodology. He can't uh, 
weasel out from the reality in any other way. And this is what he do does all the time. So all we who hate wars because in our hearts we cannot fathom the violence especially if it is unnecessary once we are hypocrites uh, sensible liberals this is the guy uh, uh, why this uh, uh, bile fr uh, from uh, from me because he is not wearing the jack boots go wear the fucking jack boots and be a leninist or stalinist what you are in fact and not uh, hold uh, lectures, for instance, in Zagreb in Croatia, subversive. They had, for Jesus Christ's sakes, they had subversive film festival organized by TCOM, that's a teleoperator, a German, a German uh, corporation. Zizek, Oliver Stone, Srećko Horvat, some of these Croatian leftists, uh, I think Badiou was, no, Tari Kali, and such, such people miserable miserable robespierre robespierre's plus hypocrisy robespierre was not a hypocrite he was a lunatic <laughs> they are hypocrite lunatics okay let's go further mm. eh. much more important the revolutionary terror of 19 uh, 1792 was not a case of what Walter Benjamin and others call state-founding violence, but a case of the divine violence. So it's uh, divine violence is the pure uh, actualization of justice, equality, fraternity and liberty. That's how Zizek sees it, and that's how he claims, and I think with full right, uh, Robespierre. So it let's go uh, uh, let's uh, I'm sorry let's repeat this quote if the mainspring of popular government in peacetime is virtue amid the revolution it is at the same time virtue and terror so in the in the in the time of in the moment in the event with BE of building this free republic republic of freedom virtue and terror coincide they are identical virtue without which terror is fatal terror without which virtue is impotent so one might say uh, that terror is the content while virtue is the form terror is nothing but prompt severe ex inflexible justice it is therefore an emanation of <laughs> virtue it is less a special principle than a consequence of the general principle of democracy applied to a country's most pressing needs. So it's an absolute standpoint. It's a theological, metaphysical standpoint, but in a secularized way. And it has to be enacted, interpreted by the leader, uh, be it uh, party, be it Robespierre, be it Stalin, be it Slavoj Žižek. And Slavoj Žižek, uh, mind you, to be honest uh, to him, he he's very well aware of this and he addresses this problem somewhere along the way. I'm not really sure we'll have time to cover all of that. As you see, this page one, we have 12 pages. and Of course, we won't do the whole thing. But uh, there will be uh, in show notes um, a link to this article and it is uh, very advisable to give it a read. It is difficult, it is thickly written and uh, thickly in the sense it's thick, it's, 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 it's not uh, everything matters. You have to read it sentence by sentence. It's really worth your time, I think. So, this is the divine vi violence. The Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjaminian, that's Walter Benjamin, uh, divine violence should be thus conceived as divine in the precise sense of the old Latin motto, Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The, ver uh, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Not in the perverse sense of we are doing it as mere instruments of the people's will, 
but as the heroic assumption of the solitude of sovereign decision. Again, a, a rhetorical uh, trick. So, divine violence is the voice of the people, but it is not voice of the people. It is, in fact, a heroic, solitary decision. Of course, of the Führer, not in the sense of German. And we'll, uh, mind you, say something about this too, this German thing. But let's say Lenin or Stalin on some a revolutionary hero, the, the man of destiny, the one that... Uh, puts the uh, puts the course of history in the right way, and Zizek uh, just flips uh, rhetorically uh, these sentences, uh, complex sentences, around to obfuscate uh, that uh, this is the only uh, the only um, conclusion uh, one can uh, infer. So he is interested how we can just to repeat this how to, uh, we can reinvent this terror. He reminds of, of Maurice Merleau-Ponty, who wrote in '46 uh, in defense of Soviet communism uh, when he in the in the book or essay I don't know I I don't remember it's a long time that I read Merleau-Ponty and I don't plan to revisit him, Humanism and Terror, uh, whereby he um, tries to argue for terror being um, justified by futurity, futurity uh, the, the, uh, the end justifying the means, because if Stalin manages to, re to produce a new socialist man, well, okay, then terror will be uh, as abla uh, ablated as uh, Hege in the Hegelian sen sense of Aufhebung, of, of uh, uh, at the same time uh, revoking it in this new epoch and uh, using it as uh, conserving uh, conserving its fruits in in a new new Soviet man. Uh, excuse me, it's uh, uh, however good or bad one's mastery of English is when you start to paraphrase Hegel in English in this German words, uh, it, it, is very, it becomes very difficult, so I apologize if I was not, uh, not very clear about this, but believe me, neither, neither are the, these authors that Zizek uh, quotes. But Zizek is interested with something else. There is, however, fourth variation. There was uh, some other variations uh, besides Merleau-Ponty. We will we'll take only his. Usually left aside. The choice of humanism or terror, that is, a disjunction you will not accept terror if it is implied. Uh, you will not accept humanism it, if terror is implied in it. But with terror, not humanism as a positive term. So what Zizek wants is to accept terror and ditch humanism and ditch every kind of terror that includes humanism. This is a radical position, difficult to sustain, but perhaps oh, indeed it is. Our only hope. Great. It does not amount to the obscene madness of openly pursuing a terrorist and inhuman politics, but something much more difficult to think. Again, he does it. It is not, so he says, it is not the madness of terrorist and humanist politics, but, but it in, in fact is, although it's difficult to justify it to you, dear reader. This is oh, really, really interesting. I think this is a bit about Althusser. And what uh, Zizek wants to be the subject of this, and this is interesting, of this new revolutionary terror, this content of a revolution that has to be uh, present in order that form of justice, equality and liberty be actualized, is this. He, he says, in, he writes, in philosophical terms, this inhuman dimension can be defined as that of a subject subtracted from all form of human individuality, 
or personality, which is why in today's popular culture one of the exemplary figures of pure subject is a non-human, alien cyborg, who displays more fidelity to the task, dignity and freedom than its human counterparts, from the Schwarzenegger figure in Terminator to the Roger Hauer android or replicant in Blade Runner. Now, what is this? He wants to find the subject of revolutionary terror, a radical subject. Ring any bells, followers of Kali Tribune, if you are not just uh, drive by clicking on this YouTube video and you follow Kali Tribune, you might heard, might have heard me talk about radical subject. This is Dugin, Dugin's favorite term, although Dugin didn't invent it. This is something very, very similar to what Dugin wants with his uh, radical subject and what he calls, but what it, this is, in fact, this virtual individuality is the individuum. The term, we, uh, the individual without properties, the virtual I, the transcendental I that is, in fact, non-existence. This uh, so this should be the subject of terror and quite amply because the terror is only thing that can uh, proceed from individuum in this sense let's see what Zizek has to say further however what if fully recognizing this dependence as a fact uh, he uh, talks about dependence between transcendental subject and empirical subject this is something from phenomenology, from German philosopher Husserl. Uh, the idea that uh, uh, empirical subject, that is in the, in the instance I and you who are listening to me, we are two empirical subjects, that we have this, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we can refer to transcendental subject, that is a communal, uh, let's say inverted commas, communal subject, that is non-empirical subject and it is very problematic Husserl believed that such subject pure subjectivity exists in all of us and that we can grasp it but uh, most followers of Husserl as Foucault uh, believed that such uh, transcendental subjectivity does not exist yet uh, they uh, devoted uh, <laughs> most of their thinking about uh, exactly about it so it doesn't exist, but you build everything on it. Don't ask, please. This is postmodernity. And you know how the proverb goes. Everything goes. So just to make this clear. So Zizek says about sub this transcendental subject. However, what if fully recognizing this dependence as a fact, namely that empirical uh, transcendental subject uh, could not exist, uh, without empirical subject, without you and I and other people, and nothing more than this, a stupid fact of being, this means that you and I are two stupid facts of being, in the light of transcendental subject, one nonetheless exists on the truth of its negation, the truth of the assertion of the independence of the subject with regard to the empirical individuals qua living being. Is this independence not demonstrated in the ultimate gesture of risking one's life on being ready to forsake one's being? He is trying again to weasel out from the fact one fact. Now, uh, the subject, the individuum, the virtual I of the revolutionary that is capable to project the terror, should we infer virtual terror, we'll see. Uh, is not you and I, it is something to which you and I can recur in annihilation of ourselves. This is what he means, but he doesn't want to, to say it up front. And he calls this risking of one's life, a readiness to annihilate yourself. But this is not uh, risking your life in a some sense, heroic sense. It is risking your life in a nihilist sense. And now he quotes 
uh, quotes Robespierre for the sake of brevity I'll pass over it although it is very interesting where Robespierre identifies himself uh, with a, a revolutionary assembly with covenant and uh, uh, in the midst of prosecutions uh, and say that one fears uh, Uh, f fears that that uh, that he will be uh, condemned f as a traitor to revolution, and then uh, Robespierre says, "I say that anyone who trembles at this moment is guilty, for innocence never fears public scrutiny." And this is uh, ultra totalitarian uh, statement, and uh, Zizek recognizes it as such. What is very interesting in Zizek. Uh, I don't quote everything, uh, so do not go too far in, in, in temporal sense, not to make this two-hour video. Uh, he recognizes everything morally condemnable, and in a way even condemns it, and then he reformulates it <laughs> and accepts it. This is the statement of this radical subject of terror. That is, ability not only to forsake one's own life, but for, to forsake every life. This is it. And this is this reference point of revolutionary terror Zizek wants to resurrect. In short, he explains, can Robespierre be sure that the process he unleashed will not swallow him. Is it here that his position assumes the sublime greatness? He fully assumes the danger, that the danger that now threatens Danton will tomorrow threaten him. Because this was when a speech when Danton was condemned. Or Danton, the revolutionary and former friend of Robespierre. Uh, at the time where Robespierre was still empirical subject. The reason that he is so serene, that he is not afraid of his fate, is not that Danton was a traitor, while he, Robespierre, is pure, a direct embodiment of the people's will. It is that he, Robespierre, is not afraid to die. His eventual death will be a mere accident which counts for nothing. You know why? Because, not because he is brave, it's because Robespierre annihilates himself as a human being, as a person. This is what Zizek wants us to do if we are to be revolutionaries of the future. He, of course, cannot advocate uh, guillotining the enemies of revolution because, after all, he depends on corporate media and reputable uh, publishers and he cannot say this openly, but he shares this mentality. And this makes him a uh, really worrisome figure. As worrisome as, uh, for instance, Alexander Dugin. Only he is living in, in the system where he Dugin, Dugin can really organize uh, revolutionary actions. Uh, Zizek really can't, because... Uh, he would uh, he, he would get himself into trouble very soon probably in the west yeah and he's here he's talking of the japanese uh, uh, soldiers that were always ready to die uh, this famous uh, japanese discipline of bushido uh, samurai code that was applied in World War II, and, and here, uh, in that sense, in that context, Zizek has to say that instead of dismissing this feature that is of uh, Japanese soldiers as part of the fascist militarism, one should assert it as also a constitutive of a radical revolutionary position. <laughs> of course. And this is important. And so when we ascend to this nothingness of radical subject that does not exist but is uh, the ultimate principle by which a revolution comes about, 
that is it is it does not exist but it necessarily exists and I repeat don't ask don't ask please don't ask <laughs> the, uh, but this is uh, Zizek's position uh, what will come to pass? Uh, what is the relation to the world uh, from this radical subjectivity of terrorism? Of this radical, as he calls it, inhuman. In us, that we have to nourish. Another human dimension of the couple, virtue, terror, promoted by Robespierre, is the rejection of habit in the sense of the agency of realistic compromises. Now, by habit, he thinks about our ability to live the everyday life without conforming to the systems of rules, but conforming kind of intuitively and uh, only to a certain extent and by uh, having uh, attuning ourselves to social norms. He illustrates... Recall the polite offer meant to be refused. Is it a habit to refuse such an offer? It is a habit to refuse such an offer, and anyone who accepts such an offer commits a vulgar blunder. So I think you know what he means by this. For instance, somebody, oh, I don't know, in, in Western countries, what would be offer um, impolite to to accept for instance when somebody is giving you money you want to pay for drink somebody is trying to push before you to to, to to in order for him to pay and we all know that you have to you have to once you you decided that you will pay for the round of drinks you must stop him and he is fighting because haha, he, he doesn't want you to go into uh, overheads <laughs> and uh, spent too much of your hard earned money and he's pushing you, you are pushing him, he's pushing you, of course you pay for this and it would be <laughs> very impolite when uh, you you say I'll buy, I'll pay for this round of drinks and somebody says no, 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 I said okay you do it, nobody does this but uh, what is interesting to note here is that Zizek doesn't like this. He wants this broken down, but you must not bro break down uh, these things. This is kind of like a banal example, but there are not so banal examples. And habit is the site, mode of uh, virtue, of a moral, uh, moral activity, because habit... Uh, is an exercise of essence of of something that is more fundamental than habit, uh, but is uh, a kind of uh, uh, mode in which we exist when we exercise uh, our essential choices. For instance, uh, being a good man means being habitually good man. That doesn't mean that you are not essentially good or that your nature is not good. But good habit uh, points uh, to an essence that is having its energia, as the Greeks would say, its actuality that is actualized to a great extent. And this is something he obviously don't like and wants to break, the, break this. He wants something else. And says, measured against this background, revolutionary egalitarian figures from Robespierre to John Brown, the abolitionist, are figures without habits. They refuse to take into account the habits that qualify the functioning of a universal rule. That is, those are men who cannot live without theoretical system that justifies their actions. Pure, absolute system. The problem here, this is a little bit outside of the context, context but I have to re <laughs> read it aloud. The problem here is not terror as such. Our task today is precisely to reinvent emancipatory terror. <laughs> Just let us not forget what is this all about. Now this is, there is a lot of Jacques Lacan here. We'll skip that. How are we to reinvent the Jacobin terror? 
Uh, this is about terrorist potential of Kantian ethics. Oh my god. Okay. We'll go to the end. Unfortunately, it would take us too long to go through a whole essay. Perhaps you can email Kali Tribune with questions, with comments and so on. Uh, it deserves a much more scrutiny, but let's say that this was enough to, to demonstrate something. And we'll say, see how he, uh, how, how he um, uh, finalizes his quest for inhuman basis of terror. He's looking for inhuman. He's rejecting humanism. He's accepting terror, so he's looking for inhuman basis of terror. Mm -hmm. Through direct democracy and other things. And so he quotes uh, Alain Badiou, a French a Marxist, and uh, I think also a leftist Heideggerian, very interesting. The true task are not momentary democratic explosions which undermine the established quote unquote police order, but the dimension designated by Badiou as that of the fidelity to the event. The event is the revolution that is something that is always coming to be but never is present. That is always new, this sublime transcendent moment they believe in. That failed in fact historically, so now they again project it into some kind of future. How to translate, inscribe the democratic explosion into the positive police order, how to impose on social reality a new lasting order. This is properly, this is the properly de terrorist dimension of every authentic democratic explosion. The brutal imposition of a new order. And this is why, while everybody loves democratic rebellions, the spectacular carnivalesque explosions of the popular will an anxiety arises when this will wants to persist, to institutionalize itself. And the more authentic the rebellion is, the more terrorist is this institutionalization. Now, democracy, in this sense, we skipped a huge chunk of text for brevity's sakes, but I'll explain what he means by democracy. He means direct democracy in the vein of Iranian revolution uh, that was covered by Foucault in the vein of, uh, for instance, um, Occupy Wall Street, uh, anything of this sort. That is a revolution that completely uh, the, the behavior, the mass behavior, uh, where uh, the people who are uh, completely universal who are not particular in, in interest group, but people as such take power. In the Marxist ter terms, the, these are, those are proletariat, but as there is no more really a proletariat in the West, uh, these people like Zizek have to invent a new proletariat. So that must be people who, in some sense, uh, find themselves in situation to become people without properties, without class, without uh, a social role uh, in the system, without uh, let's without a place in the world. And uh, sometimes people like him use those students, like people in Occupy Main uh, Wall Street. Uh, not because they are solidarized with their plight, not because they want them good, they wish them well, but because those students uh, are considered by them as an universal people, as completely formal expression of people, as people without properties. And without properties means absolutely free to mold and to explode into new society. This is typical uh, leftist brand of nihilism. There is a rightist kind. And uh, usually when we talk about Dugin, uh, we, we talk, or Heidegger, uh, we talk about this. On the other uh, side of political spectrum, with, for instance, with Heidegger's Dasein, 
and uh, folk and Dugin's fourth political theory and his radical subject. This really comes close to be identical in its consequences. So this is what Zizek uh, calls democracy and the people. And what he wants here is not how we bring about this rebellion, but how we turn it into functioning police state. <laughs> because there is always morning after, after these rebellions, you have to institutionalize this, this new order, this new revolutionary order. And this uh, requires terror. Now, let's be frank here. Uh, this is what he thinks. Uh, maybe you can... Uh, both re left and right are very broad terms that encompass a lot of things and this is not in the indiction on the left as such this is indiction of well like let's say communism in general and Zizek and likes of Zizek uh, maybe you can have a, a leftist uh, politics in the country that is very uh, left leaning but not police state Yet Zizek does not think this. Zizek considers terror to be essential content of revolution. While virtue or justice is a form, a concept. A concept but not the drive. Not those that force, that cuts head, heads or shoots uh, the class enemies and so forth and this is what he wants. The harsh consequence to be accepted here is that this excess of egalitarian democracy over the democratic procedure can only institutionalize itself in the guise of its opposite as revolutionary democratic terror. So again, how to reinvent this terror for today? For the end time, I'll repeat uh, that he's, uh, he's manipulating us here. Uh, the terror, revolutionary democratic terror, is not the opposite of democracy, uh, egalitarian des democracy as he sees it. Uh, it, is, it is identical, it is uh, the expression of its essence. So it's not its opposite. In Zizek's view, uh, the terror is, is a constituent, is what drives egalitarian direct democracy. So he quotes uh, Alain Badiou's uh, ideas how this should be done. We'll skip them. And he'll ref because he will reformulate them somewhat, uh, he, uh, but, but stays very close to Badiou's. Uh, totalitarian ideas and is the only appropriate way to counter the threat of ecological catastrophe now we get to ecological catastrophe for out of the blue that looms at our horizon not precisely the combination of these four moments what is demanded is strict egalitarian justice that is all people should pay the same price in eventual renunciation one should impose the same worldwide norms of per capita energy consumption. How you have sustainable development uh, for that. You don't need Zizek. Carbon dioxide emissions, etc. See why they love this uh, global uh, gl climate change. It's not warming anymore. Story. This is the story in itself. We already worked on this on Kali Tribune. We won't go into debate whether it is real or it is not real. This catastrophe, looming catastrophe. They need catastrophe. They don't care about nature. They don't have a slightest idea about uh, cl climatology, about weather, about climate, about anything. They need enemy. They need something that uh, brings world together so they can see it uh, ruled in this way that everybody can be leveled the other requirement 
to reinvent terror is <laughs> terror ruthless punishment of all who violate the imposed protective measures inclusive of severe limitations of liberal freedoms in quotation marks technological control of the prospective lawbreakers this must be some kind of surveillance now liberal freedom Zizek, you should have known better. This guy uh, knew what it means when your freedoms are threatened by communist army, because this is what happened in Slovenia. It lasted, didn't last long. There were not many dead, but uh, people of his ilk, and he was on the opposite side at that time, tried to limit their liberal freedoms with T-84 tanks. And believe me, it's not a pretty sight. And what Zizek here does is what, what we said at the beginning. He takes a human, something from human nature, which of course does not exist in his view, and politicizes it, makes it liberal. It's not liberal freedom, it's, a f it's freedom. It's not liberal, it's just freedom. Don't believe him when he does this. This is the method of communist commissar who is writing a death sentence on somebody. This is how they operated. With these lures to justify, to politically justify because every every sentence had to have this political justification why it is done there has to be rationale and this is something of that sort this is the mindset of this guy and nobody in the west seems to have problems with this it's very easy uh, this slur fascist is thrown around at everybody almost everybody who is not strictly left it is thrown on properly leftist people intellectuals but nobody calls this idiot stalinist he calls himself leninist as it is so much better i don't know but this is the this is uh, this is a commissar this is uh, he, he would never have guts to participate in the real revolution as he imagines it here, and this is very important. But his imagination knows no bounds, and it is very on the right line, on the right party line. No left leanings. <laughs> He's not Trotsky. Furthermore, voluntarism. The only way to confront the threat of the ecological catastrophe is by means of large-scale collective decisions which will run counter the spontaneous <laughs> immanent logic of capitalist development. It is no question of helping historical tendency or necessity to realize itself, but to stop the train of history which runs towards the precipice of global catastrophe, of course. So... To uh, re finally realize the communist utopia, which did not fail, it was an illusion, it did not fail, because capitalism will now destroy itself, because it will destroy environment, and uh, will help him, will help capitalism uh, be revoked by accepting this necessity, and... Uh, stopping the train of history as if we are the masters of history I, if if the history is something that is absolutely the work of uh, con human conscious subject unbelievable and last but not least all this combined with the trust in the people one should not be afraid to assert as a combination of terror and trust in the people the reactivation of one of the figures of all egalitarian revolutionary terror, the informer who denounces the culprits to the authorities. Unbelievable. Now, look, look at how he weasels out of it. Already in the case of the Enron scandal, the Time magazine was right to celebrate the insiders who tipped off the financial authorities 
as true public heroes. <laughs> now he wants to, uh, to 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 show this to be. Uh, he's thinking about corporate informers, people who snitch on corporations when they corporations uh, uh, do ecological sins. But this is not what he means, dear reader, listener, observer of this video. No, 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 no. He means on Spitzel, as we used to call them. Udbash. He's talking about secret police uh, informers and collaborators. The worst kind of people that communism produced. And they are very persistent. They are very hard to root out once you have them in your midst. So this is Zizek. And this is how he concludes. He talks about uh, critique of Robespierre uh, directed by some uh, biographers and of his where he is recognized as a, a rather virtuous and a rather a benevolent person uh, that was completely uh, obs possessed by his own uh, devotedness to revolutionary idea which made him in a, in a in practically in a sort of demon in, in a mass murderer and what has Slavo to say about it Happy us who live under cynical public opinion manipulators, not under sincere Muslim fundamentalists ready to fully engage themselves in their projects. What better proof of the ethico-political misery of our epoch, whose ultimate mobilizing motive is the mistrust of virtue? Exclamation mark. Now, mistrust of what virtue? This is an uh, expression, those critics of Robespierre, bi biographer of Robespierre, Ruth Scar, uh, in his, her book Fatal Purity, uh, pointed out that he was a terrorist uh, with, a, with a nice personality and that it is frightening that something like this was possible, that he was consumed by his own inhumanity, that is, by this transcendental ego or individuum, a virtual eye, which Zizek wants to resurrect, he was consumed by this, in her opinion, as much as I see from Zizek's quote. And this, what consumed that poor man, was what Zizek considers to be virtue. And he is, uh, uh, he is uh, angry that somebody mistrusts this kind of virtue. Should we... Uh, so flabbergasted that he even uses exclamation marks. <laughs> Should we not affirm against such opportunist realism, opportunist realism, the simple faith in the eternal idea of freedom? Oh, I love when communists co uh, talk about eternity, uh, which persists through all defeats, without which, as it was clear to Robespierre, a revolution is just a noisy crime that destroys another crime. The fate most poignantly expressed in Robespierre's very last speech on the 8th Thermidor, 1794, the day before his arrest and uh, execution. And I won't quote it because I'm really tired of quoting Robespierre uh, in, in Zizek's key, where Robespierre calls for uh, laying everything down to bring about Earth's world's first republic and that ended up so miserably for him. Uh, now, what he wants here, he calls, he calls human horror in the face of terror, opportunist realism. What a jerk. What a diabolical jerk, masking as buffoon. Like hell buffoon, he's no buffoon. No, 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 no. No, no, there is more behind that, uh, behind that ridiculous, uh, ridiculous facade. Mm, much more, and much less, in some sense.
in fact nothing <laughs> opportunist realism the simple faith in the eternal idea of uh, freedom this is what arguably the most revered leftist thinker of our present day and age advocates this is divine violence and note that the most important thing is a kind of institutionalization of the violence that is uh, an ability and a success in uh, taking the event with Big E I think this is Badiou's term originally that is in fact revolution and institutionalizing the revolution this is where <laughs> this is in fact where terror begins in trying to to uh, some kind uh, in, in some way uh, push entire world of that un unhappy state with uh, un unhappy nation with where this event uh, came to pass in the procrustrian bed of these concepts <coughs> excuse me this is what he wants so uh, and uh, the subject of this terror has to be uh, has to be this pure subject this individuum this Dasein one might say even Heideggerian Dasein this is very important to note uh, and uh, hopefully uh, on Kali Tribune relatively soon uh, we'll do uh, probably video and maybe it will be in writing analysis of uh, Heidegger's black notebooks some fragments from black notebooks uh, where there are, especially from the Nazi times, where he was a rector of uh, Freiburg University, uh, and some statements, not about, it's not about so much about Heidegger's Nazism, Heidegger was not a Nazi in the sense that regular Nazis were Nazis, but this mentality, this kind of thinking, but coming, let's say, um, with some uh, reservations from the right this was from the left but this Zizek is very hard to to uh, to beat with his radical lunacy and with his hypocrisy uh, it is highly recommended the, to read this essay uh, unfortunately we already uh, uh, more than an hour and 10 minutes into video so we can't do it all but it would be very rewarding to go through the whole thing because there are very interesting passages and much more to say about it but unfortunately uh, this is where we must stop thank you for your attention this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune signing out